Do you send holiday cards? If so, let's make it easier. That's what we're talking about today. Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. It's nice to share holiday cards with family and friends, but addressing those cards can be time-consuming. Let's make it easier by identifying all the steps and using some automation. First, realize that what we have is a project. It's not just one step and it's done. Let me let you look over my shoulder so you can see what I mean. I open Remember the Milk and search Christmas cards so that it brings up just that one item. What you see here is a project called Christmas cards have been mailed. What you're seeing is how I handle projects in Remember the Milk. The project is phrased as a statement which is either true or false. When the statement's true, then check it off is done. Until that time, there's work to do. I've also given the project a date. That date represents when I want to either see the project again or when I expect to have that project completed. In this case, December 4th is the date I would like to be able to check this off as done. Now, one thing I want to mention to you here, I'm using the paid version of Remember the Milk. It allows me to do subtasks. So the way I'm working here, if I have a project, the project is a task that has subtasks. All of the little steps are subtasks within it. If I were not using this, I would want to refer you to Chapter 5 in my book, Get Organized, Time Management for School Leaders, where I talk about a, a nifty way to keep up with the projects and the next steps that are involved with them when you don't have subtasks. Anyway, back to what I'm doing here. On any given day, the appropriate subtasks show up in my today list. Follow along as we look at the various steps. Every year, my wife and I enclose a letter with each Christmas card. It updates our friends on what's been going on in our lives over the past year. So I start by drafting that letter and then finalizing it. I want to print it out on some nice Christmas letterhead. Usually we have enough left over from the year before, uh, because, of course, after Christmas, lots of things are on sale and we can stock up then. But in case I don't, I you know just go and buy some more. I've got that reminder right there on my list. So we start by putting the letterhead in the printer at home and start printing the copies. Each year, we'll add new people to our Christmas card list and remove other people. In a moment, I'll show you about that process. The most tedious thing could be addressing the envelopes. But for years, we've been printing mailing labels, and I'll show you that process as well. We also need Christmas stamps, so there's a trip to the post office. You'll notice I do not have on my list something about buying Christmas cards. We contribute to a number of charitable organizations, and generally each one sends us some Christmas cards and matching envelopes. Between those that we receive from these organizations and beautiful cards that we see on sale after Christmas that we just can't resist, we always have enough on hand without purchasing any. So with Christmas cards, matching envelopes, letters, stamps, and mailing labels, assembling it all is something that we can do quickly. And so with the time you save through an efficient process, you can use some of that time to handwrite a little note in some of those cards to personalize them. So let's look at the process for maintaining our Christmas card list and printing the labels. On an Excel spreadsheet, we have the name, address, city, state, and zip. That's all the information we need in order to print the labels. But we have an additional column called Christmas cards. Here we have a record of what years we have sent and what years we have received a card from each person. For example, for this first person on the list, you can see that in 2023, we sent and received a card from this person. Same in 22, 21, and 20. 
Here's someone to whom we sent a card in 23, 22, 21, and 20, but we haven't received a card from them since 2020. And here's someone just added to the list last year. We sent to them and we received a card from them. In the next column, it's a little bit of magic. I use this same spreadsheet for a number of things, not just Christmas cards. So I can filter this column to show only the people that have Christmas card list in the corresponding cell. To make it easy to determine who gets a Christmas card and who doesn't, I use a little Excel formula. On the screen, you see that formula. I'll also put the formula in the body of the blog post so that you can copy and paste it in your own spreadsheet. Notice that column H is the column that shows the record of sending and receiving from previous years. So anyone with the number 23 in that cell is going to be included on our Christmas card list. Next year, I will update that formula and change the 23 to a 24 and fill the formula down in that column. With the spreadsheet complete, we can print our labels. We need a Word document for the labels. After opening a new Word document, go to the tab that says Mailings. We'll basically work from left to right. Now, if you've never done a mail merge before, I would suggest searching YouTube for a video dedicated to mail merge. You'll see how to do the following. Start a mail merge and choose mailing labels. Choose the size so that it corresponds to the labels you've already purchased. You'll learn how to select the recipient list. In other words, you'll navigate to the spreadsheet you already created that holds the names and addresses of the people to whom you want to send the cards. You'll then edit that list. If you're like me and use the spreadsheet for different things, you'll want to narrow it down to only the people who are on your Christmas card list. Here's where I would filter and select only Christmas card list. One at a time, you'll choose what fields to add to your labels. You'll see a list of the fields in the spreadsheet. Choose the appropriate ones. You'll be able to choose a font and select the size for your font. When you click preview results, the names and addresses will appear. That way, you'll see what the finished product will look like. Next, you would choose Finish and Merge. You'll choose Print Documents. At this point, be sure you have labels in the printer. You're now only a couple of clicks away from printing your labels. Now, one thing I would do would be, once you printed the labels, go back and print a second time, just on plain paper. That's going to give you a checkoff list. So as people are sending you cards, you can kind of keep a quick record of who you've received cards from so that you can later update your spreadsheet. I'll add a 24SR for all the people to whom we both sent and received a card. And I'll add a 24S for the people we sent to but didn't receive. See someone on your list from last year that you want to remove? Well, here's how I do it. Go ahead and let the labels print and then just peel their label off and throw it away. On the printout that you do that gives you that record of people that you've sent to and received from that you're using to update your spreadsheet, put an X on that person. And then when you go to update the spreadsheet for the coming year, where I'm going to be putting those 24 SRs and 24 S's, just don't put anything by their name. So now when I update the formula, since they don't have a 24 in the appropriate column, it's not going to pull them up as being on the Christmas card list next year. One last thing, as cards begin to arrive in the mail, how do you want to display them? Well, if you have blinds like we do, Here's an easy way that we've been using for years. Slip each card over one of the slats and you have an instant display. 
Holiday cards are fun to send and receive. It helps us keep in touch. And with a good system, we can automate the repetitious parts and have more time to enjoy the holiday season. Thanks for stopping by. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and make it look easy.